All right, hi folks. Um, sorry, I had a little technical issue there, so I'll just get right into things. So welcome to our Tuesday night um, HIIT workout. So today we're going to be doing a Tabata workout, okay? So that means 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest with one exercise, and then you're going to do that for eight sets of that one exercise, okay? When that's done, we'll have a little minute rest. I'll introduce the next exercise, and we're going to go through five different exercises in that kind of workout style. Okay? As always, go at your own pace um, and make sure you're focusing on good technique. We'll get into a little warm up here and then we'll get into the workout. So let's start on the floor for the warm up. Okay? One knee is in a triangle, the other leg's pulled in behind uh, that other foot. Hands are on either side of the knee, nice and tall through the chest and spine. We're going to hinge forward and you're going to feel that stretch through the glute. So for me, my left knee is forward. I'm feeling that stretch through my left glute. I'm going to scan back and forth. And we're just looking to loosen up the hips here, okay? If you've had a long day of sitting, those hips can get tight, and that's where we should have a ton of movement is through our hips. So we want to unlock those. Okay, so we can come back up from there. My hands are going to be on either side of the knee, and now I'm going to start walking my hands away from my feet. Okay, so as I walk away, I start to create a big bow through that right side, big stretch there, feeling that all through my quad, hip flexor, even into my core. I can look over that back shoulder. So for me, it's my left shoulder. I'm looking over and really unlocking those hips. Okay, so we'll transition out of that. And now we'll have the other side. So for me, my right knee is forward. My left leg is tucked back in behind. My hands are on either side of the knee. Nice and tall. I'm going to hinge forward, feeling that stretch through the glutes. Again, I can scan back and forth, try and find those tight spots. And if I feel something that feels a little tight, I'll just sink in a little bit deeper, getting that gentle stretch. Okay, so from there, again, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna walk my hands away from that foot. So I'm creating that big bow again through the top side, stretching out the hips, looking over that back shoulder to get an even better stretch. And then focus on that breathing, releasing everything as we go through that. Great, so we've taken care of the hips now. We're gonna incorporate a little bit of the upper body, okay? So I'm gonna reach back with my right hand, feel that stretch in my chest and the front of my shoulder, and then I'm gonna bring my opposite knee up and touch elbow to knee, okay? So we're getting a little activation through the core while we're doing this one as well. Big stretch and down, big stretch, connect, big stretch and connect. Good, we'll hit the other side now. So the left hand's gonna reach back, big stretch through the chest, even into the core, and then elbow to knee. Open up, elbow to knee. Open up. We'll do two more. You can look at the hand if you want to to start tying in a bit of the neck stretching. And that's great. So now we're going to do a little uh, lunge activation, a little stretch for the hip flexor, a little bit of rotation. So what we're going to do is we can step forward with our left foot. I'm going to take my hands out in front of me uh, just a little bit wider than shoulder width. And then I'm just going to rotate to my left. Okay? Once I've done that, I'm going to push through my left foot, drive back up to standing. Okay? So we'll do that again. Land on that left foot. I'm going to turn back up to standing. Okay? So we're starting to get a little bit of that activation in now, uh, getting the legs fired up and getting our trunk moving as well. Turn and back up. So now we'll do the same thing on the right side. You take a step that's appropriate for you. So if you feel like it's challenging, take a little bit of a smaller step. Step. Turn to the right now, okay? We're stepping with that right foot. We're gonna turn to the right. Turn. One more. Great. Awesome, so that's our warm up. We're all fired up, ready to go. So the first exercise that we're gonna start with is our fire hydrant exercise. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then we'll get started. So for the fire hydrant, you're gonna uh, get down on your hands and knees. Hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips, okay? From here, I'm going to be pretty stable through my trunk, and I'm just going to take my knee and my foot out to the side, so a little bit of abduction. Okay, so out to the side, back down. Out to the side, back down. Okay, so that's going to work on these muscles on our hips, our glutes, uh, really important for hip stability and stabilizing the lower leg. We're going to get some hip mobility as well. We're going to feel a little stretch through our groin as we go out. So we'll do 20 seconds of work on one side. We'll get our little 10 second rest. Then we'll do 20 seconds on the other side, and we'll just alternate back and forth through that data. Okay, so we'll get started, and here we go, three, two, one, and go. So we're in that all fours position, nice and stable through our trunk, and then just taking that leg out to the side, feeling the hips kind of open up, 
and the glutes activating. So we're trying to get the knee and the foot to go out, the, out to the side together. And we're resting. So that was our 20 seconds of work. We got a quick 10 seconds, it's gonna go quick, and then we'll be back into our 20 seconds work again. So three, two, one, and we're working again. So now we're going the other side. Just alternating back and forth like that. Stay stable through your trunk. So pushing the hands into the ground, you'll feel your shoulders working a little bit to stabilize you. Three seconds left. And time. Good. So we take a little rest. If you need to, you can do a little wrist relief. So if you're feeling that in the forearms, after working all day, we can do a little stretch there. We're back in our all fours position. We're back on that right side now. So the rest starts to go pretty quick with this. Good. Keep the leg moving. Again, keep that trunk stable. Do the stretch to the groin. We've got about five seconds left. So keep getting those reps. And time, we're resting. So 10 seconds again. Again, if you need a little wrist relief, go ahead. But we've got five, four, three, two, one, and we're going again. Two, that's it, out to the side. Foot and knee moving together as they go out to the side there. Three seconds left. And time, good, so we're resting. Halfway, halfway. Okay, three, back in position, two, one, and go. Seven seconds. Good job, good job. Just taking a little breather, and then we're gonna hit that other side. Three seconds, back in position, two, one. Stay stable again through the torso as we're maybe getting a little more tired, really push those hands in. Don't let your trunk move too much. Should start to maybe feel the glutes burning a little bit now. And then we're resting. Two rounds left. Great work, everyone. Keep that up. Okay, five seconds. Back in position. And here we go. Good. Foot and knee are moving together out to the side. Go with whatever range feels comfortable for you. If it feels tight through the hips, don't go out quite as far. If you're feeling nice and mobile, go to your range. Now we're resting again. Good work, good work. Last one coming up here. And we can take a little breather while I explain the next one. Okay, get in position. Three, two, one. And here we go. Keep pushing. Coming up on 10 seconds left. Stable through the trunk. Legs are moving. Last three seconds. And time. Good work. So that's the first exercise down. So the next exercise that we're going to go through is a prone Y. So we'll be lying on our chest for this one. Um, our hands are going to be up, so our arms are going to be in this Y position. Okay, so about a 45 degree angle. They're not straight up. They're not right over the side. They're in the middle. Okay. From there, we're going to lift the hands and the elbows just off the ground. Okay. So what is going to be doing the work is these muscles between our shoulder blades. Okay. We shouldn't feel like too much shrugging or upper traps doing the work. It's these scapular retractors in between, okay? So you're gonna lift whatever feels comfortable for you. Just get that little bit of engagement and then back down. Uh, it's the same style of work. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. We'll do our eight rounds. So we'll get down on the mat and we'll get started with those prone Ys. So gonna give myself enough room here. Okay, and here we go. So just lifting the arms. Your head should stay in contact with the ground. You don't want to be lifting your back uh, or lifting with your low back. It's your upper back that's doing the work. Almost there. And we're resting. For this one, you can probably just stay in position. 
If you if you come to get up to your knees, by the time you get up, you'll have to be getting right back down again. So here we go. And go. Again, just that little lift. Feeling those shoulder blades kind of draw together and stabilize as your hands and elbows are lifting up off the ground. You shouldn't feel it through your low back. If you are, it means you're kind of lifting up off the ground, which we don't want. And we're resting. Okay, I like to pull my arms in, give myself a little break. But I'm going to stay down here. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. And here we go. Ten seconds goes quick. Good, keep lifting, feel that activation, back down. Whew, I'm starting to feel that between my shoulder blades, that's for sure. Okay, take a little breather. Five seconds left. Three, two, one, and here we go again. Thumbs will be up towards the ceiling. See how my thumbs are pointed up? You can keep the hand open if you want. You can close the fist, but thumbs are towards the ceiling. Again, lift what's comfortable for you. I'm starting to feel it. And we're resting. So we're halfway. Four rounds left. Three, two, one, and here we go. Try to not have those upper traps take over, okay? Neck should be relaxed. Whew. I'm starting to shake when I get to the top there. Keep going everyone, keep focusing on that form. If the reps decrease, no problem. Good form, work the muscle to try to work. Here we go. You'll build your capacity, and this is going to help us with healthy shoulders. When we're sitting in front of a keyboard all day, these muscles don't get any work. They get stretched out, they get weakened. Almost there. And we're resting. Two rounds left, two rounds left, you're doing great. And here we go. Good, keep pushing, keep pushing, good technique, but keep pushing. Almost there. And we're resting. One left, one left. Okay, three, that one quick. Two, one, here we go. Last one, 20 seconds of work. Keep it up, keep it up. Good, feel that squeeze between the shoulder blades. Feel that engagement there. And time. Great work, everyone, great work. Whew, small muscles, but holy cow, can they burn by the end. Okay, so that was our second exercise. So the third exercise that we're going to have, ooh, it's a core one. So this one's going to be a challenging one. We'll focus on our form, but it's our mountain climber, okay? So we're going to be in a plank position. Okay, hands are under the shoulders. Nice straight line from our uh, shoulders to our, to our heels. And then what we're going to be doing is driving our knee forward. Okay, see how my back's staying pretty flat. I'm not bouncing up or dropping down. Everything's staying pretty stationary. The only thing that's moving is that knee driving forward. I'm getting some engagement through the core, okay? So really focus on keeping that nice straight line. Really feeling your abs do the work. Uh, you shouldn't feel your low back. If we start to feel the low back, it just may mean uh, that you're fatiguing uh, your core. Maybe you need a little break. Maybe you need to focus on tightening up that form or creating a bit more tension uh, through the core, but we shouldn't feel our low back, okay? So let's get into it. Exercise three, uh, so our mountain climber, and we'll start in three, two, one, and go. Okay, in that plank, hands are under the shoulders. Uh, nice straight line from our shoulders to our heels. Driving the knee forward, feeling that tension through our core. If you want to go a little faster, no problem, but stay nice and stable. I don't want to see like crazy bouncing and stuff. Okay, core stays tight as we drive those knees forward. Okay, we're resting. 
10 seconds rest, we're on five, so I'm putting my hands back down on the ground, three, feet are going out, two, one, here we go. Driving that knee forward, feeling that tension in the core. You don't have to touch your elbow. I don't want you to round your back, so if you feel like you're stopping and you're going to have to start rounding your back, that's where you stop. Drive the knees forward, core stays tight, and we're resting. Good work, good work. Two down. I'm already feeling the core start to burn. Okay, five seconds, hands are back down on the mat. And here we go. Keep those abs tight, lots of tension through the core, nothing in our low back, okay? 10 seconds left. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Feel those abs engage. And we're resting again. Good work, good work. Whew. That one's gonna get tough. I'm gonna slow down for sure on that. Again, go at your own pace. Two seconds left, we're back down here. Okay, and we're going. Focus on that form, feel the core doing the work. Got 10 seconds left. Push, push, push. And we're resting. Okay, we're halfway, halfway. Whew. Five seconds left, so get ready. Give your abs a couple seconds there. And we're back into it. Driving the knees, keeping that tension, go at your pace. If you can push faster, go for it. If you need to go slower, hold the plank for a few seconds. We've got five seconds left. And time, we're resting again. Okay, seven seconds. Five, three, two, one, we're back in the plank, here we go. Good, push through this one, then we only have two sets left. Keep that tension in the core, shouldn't feel the low back. Okay, Ooh, I'm slowing down, but I'm focusing on my form. Everything's working in my core here. Keep pushing. We're resting, resting again. Four seconds, back in position, three, two, one, we're in our plank, here we go. I gotta really slow down here because I think my core is gonna cramp up. This one's tough. Keep that tension, driving the knees, all in the abs, nothing in your low back. Five seconds left on this one. Time, we're resting. Great work, everyone, great work. Last set here. Three, two, one, and here we go. Push yourself, whatever you can do during this. Keep that form tight. Abs are engaged. Last 10 seconds. Five seconds left. Oh, and time. Good work, good work if you push through that one. That was, that one was rough. All right. So three down, two left to go. Our next one, I'm just gonna switch my slides here to show the last two exercises. And we've got our deadlift is our next one. Okay, so deadlift, feet are gonna be hip width apart. Uh, we're gonna be hinging from the hip and then coming back up. If you have weight, you could add a little bit of weight, you don't need a lot, but body weight will even get your legs working. So feet are hip width apart, I'm gonna hinge from the hip. Okay, my bum goes back, my torso falls forward, my feet are nice and flat, and I have a neutral spine. No rounding through the back here, okay? So it's really important to get that hinge from the hips and be very protective for our low back, okay? I've got a couple uh, light, light weights here, so I'll just use that. Um, and again, body weight will be effective. We'll get our glutes working, we'll get our hamstrings working, um, and it really works on that hinge pattern, which is very protective for our low back. So we'll get started here in three, Two, one, and go. Okay, so we're hinge, stand tall, squeeze. Okay, again, focus on the form, that's the key. When you hinge, I want you to build that pattern where you're keeping that neutral spine. Okay, we're not rounding our back, and we, we're getting those hips to work. If they've been in a flexed position all day, we're starting to activate them. Okay, we're resting. So I'm just gonna stand here. 
10 seconds goes really quick, especially near the end of this workout. Two, one, and go. So we're hinging forward, stand tall, squeeze. Hinge, the foot stays nice and flat, and we push the foot in the ground, stand tall at the top. Okay, you should, this one, you should not feel your low back at all. It'll be hamstrings and glutes. That'll be the prime drive. We're resting. Good work, good work. Good work. Five seconds left, I'm back in position. Three, two, one, here we go. Hinge, stand tall. So for me, I like to make sure I'm kind of looking ahead of me a little bit. So I'm not looking up, so I'm not kinking my neck, but I'm also not looking down, so I don't invite rounding. I always say eyes on the horizon. So I'm in a smaller room. For me, I'm just looking at my desk here right in front of me. Okay, we're resting. Uh, by looking at my desk, I make sure my neck's slightly extended so I'm not craning my neck, but I'm also not encouraging rounding. Okay, and here we go, next set. Good, focusing on that form. Nice flat back, we feel the hips and hamstrings or the glutes and hamstrings driving the movement. If I have dumbbells, they're staying close to my legs. They're not going out in front of me and loading my back more. They're staying close to my body. I'm resting. Good, we're halfway. That went quick. Okay, three, two, one, and go. Hinge. Good, the feet are flat. Again, think about that. Stand tall at the top, squeeze your glutes together. So we're getting that full extension of our hips. But at the top, I don't want you overarching. I don't want you really uh, arching that back. So you can think about the core staying tight at the top. And that's good, we're resting again. Okay, five seconds left. Three, two, one, we're going again, nice hinge. Ten seconds. Keep that up. Driving that good form. We're resting. Two rounds left, two rounds left. Okay, three, two, one, and here we go. Standing tall at the top. Keeping that back flat as we go forward. Resting. Good, one round left, one round left. Okay, five seconds on a rest. Three, two, one, and here we go. Work on that good pattern. I think we have some snow coming soon, so this hinge pattern will be important for all that snow shoveling and keeping our back healthy and safe when we're shoveling that snow. Almost there. And time. Good work everyone, good work. Building great patterns there, that's the key. Building great patterns, exercise that, that enhances our life. Okay, so four down, last one to go. So our fifth exercise is gonna be a high side plank with a lateral arm raise. So that's gonna look like this. So I'm off my hand, Feet are, feet are stacked, or I can have one foot in front of the other, so I like to put the top foot in front. And then from here, I'm just gonna be raising my arm up, okay, while I'm holding this side plank position. If that's a little bit too challenging, we can go off the forearm, same setup with the feet, top legs in front, and I can do that. If that gets a bit too challenging, we can even go off the knees. So we're gonna pop up off the knees, and then we're doing that lateral arm raise, so just bringing it up, back down. Okay, so we'll alternate sides just like we were with some of those other unilateral exercises. And uh, here we go, keep it up, last one. Okay, get started. So we're in position, okay, and then just up, out to the side. Again, there's all those different options. So if this is a little hard on the shoulder, go down to the forearm. Or if this is too hard on the core, down to the forearm. If that regression, you can go down to where you're off the knees. And time. So we're resting. Take your time to switch to the other side. So is it really a rest? I don't know, we're doing some work, but three, two, one. We're back up on that other side now. Okay, and bring that arm up.
keeping your body nice straight line. So from your shoulder all the way down, nice straight line there. You're going to feel that bottom side of your core. So lateral core endurance, really important for protecting low back. Almost there. And that's good, that's good. So we're switching. So back onto the other side. Get my hand in position. Got three seconds. Two, one, back up. And here we go. I like to make sure that head's in a nice neutral position, so try not to let it drop down or crank up. Just keep it looking kind of straight ahead. And I take a peek at the timer every once in a while. We've got five seconds. And time. Good work, good work. We start to feel it in the arms and the shoulder there. It's getting a little shake at the end. Okay, so we're back on the other side. Three, two, one. Here we go. Raising up. Again, if as you go, if it starts to feel a little bit more fatiguing, a little bit tired through the shoulder, drop down to that forearm. Got five seconds left. And time. Good, so we're switching to the other side. Halfway, halfway done. Five seconds left, so I'm getting in position. Three, two, one, and here we go. Good, nice and solid through the core. Feel those abs engage. You can brace, creating tension through the core. Good. Three, two, one, and time. Resting and switching. Other side. Okay, three seconds. Two, one, here we go. Good. Nice and solid. Good, nice straight line. Feel that shoulder engaged. Almost there. And time. Good job, good job. We've got two left, two left, one each side. Five seconds left. Three, two, one. Okay, here we go. The last one on this side. Push through it. Good form, core is tight. That arm moving with that lateral raise. A little bit of shoulder work in there as well. Last five seconds, hold strong. And there we go, there we go. Okay, last one coming here. So we're on the other side, five seconds left. Get in whatever position's appropriate. Here we go, go. Okay, nice straight line, core is tight. Feel that underside engaged. That bottom shoulder's engaged as well, holding you down. So you'll feel some of those scapular retractors engaged, stabilizing the shoulder. Five seconds left. And time. And time. Good work, everyone. Great work. Whew. That got challenging at the end, that's for sure. I'm getting a little sweat going here. Uh, so now we're going to go into a little cool down, okay? So we'll just start with our lats. So we can stand up, focus on our breathing, big breath in, big exhale. We're going to reach both hands up. I'm going to grab my right wrist with my left hand. From there, I'm going to lean to my left side. And I'm just going to keep breathing, taking a few seconds, a few big breaths, creating that big stretch all down the right side of my body. I can kind of roll out of it, let the arm drop in front, and reach both hands up. Now I'm going to grab my left wrist with my right hand. I'm going to lean to my right, getting that stretch all down the left side. Keep focusing on your breathing. And then you just let the hand drop down in front. Great, so next we're gonna hit the hips. So I'm gonna get a little support on my wall here. I'm gonna pull my right heel towards my, uh, my right, uh, right hip. Uh, I'm gonna push my hip forward. I'm gonna make sure my core is tight so I'm not arching my back. I wanna be nice and neutral through my core. And I'm just feeling a stretch all down the front of my quad into my hip flexors. This is a great one to do, even if you're sitting at your office or sitting at your desk, sitting after you're driving for a little bit, um, great one to open up those hips, which can really help the low back. The hip flexors attach on the lumbar spine, so if they get tight, we're gonna hit the other side now. If they get tight, they can pull on our low back, and that's maybe where some people will feel some back discomfort. 
So we push the hip forward, whatever's comfortable, the core stays tight. And just keep focusing on your breathing. That's the key when we're cooling down. Get that oxygen into the body. That's great. So the last one we're going to do, we're going to do some forward folds. So we're going to reach up to the ceiling. And then we're just going to hinge forward from the hips. Reaching down, whatever's comfortable. And then we're going to walk our hands up our legs. Reaching up. Hinging forward, the hips go back, we're hinging forward, as low as is comfortable, and then walking up, we'll do two more. Big breath in, exhale as you're going forward. Great, and then last one, nice and tall, reaching forward, feel that light stretch to the back side of our body, and then walk our way up. And that's it. Great work, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for our Tuesday uh, HIIT workout. Um, hope you have an amazing evening, and we'll see you back soon. Thanks.